So if you haven't guessed by the title yet, I'm going to be comparing various different repros, clone cards, etc. Whatever you want to consider them. Well, not a whole lot of them. I've only got three for the Super Nintendo. That's what I'm going to focus on today. And the idea for this video came about with the latest purchase I made, which is a repro of Final Fantasy V in an SNES shell with a translation patch on it. Reason for this is because I do own an official Super Famicom version of the game, which is the only way to legit own Final Fantasy V for the Super Nintendos to get one of these. But I don't read Japanese. Now, there are different ways you can go about translating it. You can dump this, patch it, and dump it onto like an EverDrive type cart. You can replace the ROMs inside. There are these... I don't know what you would call them, but there are these boards that you attach to the underside of the cart that overrides the onboard ROM with its own ROM. You can have the patch that way. You're leaving the original ROMs intact. Anyway, there's ways to do it. Uh, and I went with just a third-party clone maker because I wanted to, A, have, you know, keep this one completely intact. I mean, it's yellowed and I may need to re-retrobright it. And B, I wanted to see how this particular company did with their clones. Now, I've gone over repro carts before. These, you know, eBay, AliExpress special multi-carts that exist. As well as buying a repro card of Dragon Quest 1 and 2 at a local game shop. This, uh, for those who don't know, this is a port of the NES games Dragon Quest 1 and 2, or as it was known here in North America, Dragon Warrior 1 and 2, in the same vein that Super Mario All-Stars are ports of the NES Mario games. So I'm like, you know what, let's compare the quality of this one, the Final Fantasy V cart, with this locally sourced repro, and this, I think I bought this one on Amazon or eBay, and uh, we'll take a look at them and see if there's any differences, if they're all the same, which one's better, etc. So first one I'll start off with is Final Fantasy V. I've been doing a little bit of research online trying to find a good uh, source of a repro for it based on some reviews. Now, there is some controversy behind them that I'll get to later on. But I figured, you know, I'll order it, and I'll order it in a clear shell. That way there's no mistaking it for a legitimate copy. I mean, if you're a retro gamer, you know that it never came out officially here in the West, so... But just in case, you know, I figured I'll get in a nice clear shell. The label is actually pretty well made. Got that nice uh, glossy finish to it, but it doesn't look like it's just, you know, a generic paper label with a clear coat on there. This one actually looks good. The other thing I noticed when I first took it out of the packaging is the quality of the plastic on the cartridge is significantly better than, you know, even something like this here. It feels, this here feels kind of hollow, even though it's not, I don't know how else to explain it, but this feels very solid. The feel itself, the texture feels a lot more accurate to a official Super Nintendo cartridge that I should probably go pull for this video. Like for example, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. Yes, I know this doesn't have the cutout, doesn't matter, but this feels a lot closer in quality to this than this does, or even this so that i do appreciate that but it definitely feels a lot better than i mean even the official ones you hear that little bit of hollowness but that has to do with how they mount the pcb versus how this cart does it so anyway so i like the build quality overall i like the way it feels and everything you can kind of see the PCB inside, which we will open this up to take a look inside. You also notice the battery is mounted to the back, kind of an interesting design choice since most of the batteries are typically mounted, I believe, to the front. We'll open you know an official cartridge up too. We'll open up all, all of these just you know so we can do a comparison. I have not tried this yet, I don't know if it works, so that's something we're going to have to do for sure. But let's take a closer look here at the edge connector. I don't know if you can tell but it is uh, beveled and chamfered, which means it's not going to destroy the pins on the cartridge connector like uh, some other repros might, other clones, things like that. Although I don't think any of the repros I have, well, no. 
this multi one. It's beveled, but it's not chamfered, so could cause some issues long term. Whereas the one, the Dragon Quest one, it's kind of chamfered, but it is does have that bevel in it, so that's a good sign. Uh, for those that don't know, you always want your edge connectors, whether it's a game cartridge, whether it's a, uh, a uh, an add-on card for a computer, what have you, because you don't want to splay out the pins forcefully, kind of want them to be more gentle so that they're more likely to remain intact. Repeated uh, insertion and removal of a card that isn't beveled and chamfered can at some point cause enough stress and shock to the pins that they could break, thus needing you to replace your cartridge slot or a ISA slot if you're looking at retro computing, things like that. So, but yeah, so the overall build of this is really good. I do like it. And yeah, so let's go ahead and open it up and compare it with the, uh, the other three carts I have on here. And then we'll do a final test of this to see if this works because like I said, I haven't tried it yet. So this does use the game bit screws just like real carts do. This one's in there kind of tight. I'm willing to bet that these are probably not pre-threaded, the shells, so the initial threading is going to be a little snug. Separating the cart is a little difficult too. I wonder, this has clips inside of it. I don't believe, before we open this, because I don't want to potentially damage it, let me open up uh, Dragon Quest here. Also don't have those little clips there. Usually they have clips up on top. So, yeah. So this one has extra clips here, similar to Famicom cartridges. For those who don't know, Famicom cartridges don't have any screws of any kind. They have clips, and they're actually kind of difficult to open if you don't squeeze them at the right places. So I have to be careful with this, and I don't want to damage it. Uh, and I may have to pry it open off camera because of the awkward position. And much like a Famicom cartridge, I did squeeze uh, this part, the front part of the shell, a little bit to get these little tabs out from underneath the clips. But otherwise... There we go. So it's got a lot of different logic chips on here. I'm going to guess that's the ROM, but I'll have to look up the codes and stuff. Let me see if I can get a good shot of it there. And a bunch of other different chips and stuff like that. I'll have to look them up on the back side. Oh no, here's the ROM. And look, it's got a special thing for Star Ocean. That's pretty cool. So this is a board that's designed for certain types of games. It looks like ROM 1, 2, low, high, size of the ROM and things like that. So this is a... I've never seen a PCB like this before. I'm going to have to look it up. It even labels the uh, pins themselves. I wonder if this comes with the extra connectors on each side for like Super FX games and SA1 based and things like that. The uh, components are labeled, although they're not labeled for the values, so I don't know like what the value of this resistor or diode or anything like that, although probably ways to tell. Relatively clean PCB. There's a little bit of flux left over, but I'll forgive that. But I do like uh, the layout. I think it's interesting. I don't know if it's overcomplicated or if it's simple. Hard to say. What kind of a ROM is this using? It's going to be tough to get this. So there it is. We'll look that up as well. And place some tape over the window so that UV light doesn't inadvertently write it. But I like the fact that it's using more traditional ROMs. I don't know if there's enough room in the shell, but it would have been nice if this had been socketed. But then again, this is designed to you know, be a one-off type game. Looks like there's different options for batteries. You can do surface mount. They went with through hole. Everyone's probably seen these types of batteries all over the place. I've got a stockpile of them myself. So let's take a look at one of the other repros. We've already got Dragon Quest opened up. So as you can see, a huge difference. There is 
nothing on the back, although they do have, I'm assuming, address lines labeled for some reason. This, I like the removable battery. It's going to make it a lot easier for those that don't know how to solder to change that out if you need to, although this probably will last a long time. I'm assuming these are for programming the ROMs since these are surface mounts. I mean, you can buy programmers for them, but with them, you know, they probably pre solder everything and then program them, program them after the fact. Uh, they've got these diodes here to take the 5 volts down to 3.3 volts that these newer modern chips do uh, work off of. And looking back at the Final Fantasy V cart, again, there were some diodes and stuff on here, but there's some additional resistors, a transistor. So this is the power conversion on that cart is better than this one. It's not to say that you have to over-engineer it necessarily. We'll take a look at this multi-cart next, which I know I've shown off before uh, during a previous pickups video, as well as when I kind of went over this cart. It's going to be a similar PCB size to the uh, Dragon Quest one, although a different layout. They do not include a battery, which means if there's any games on here that support save, I don't believe this has any sort of FRAM on it. I could be wrong. It was a long time since I looked it up. Although this might have been an FRAM chip. One of these might have been, I forget. I'll have to look it up. And if I do find out or if I rediscover, I'll include some text to overlay it. Again, simple design here for power conversion. This is using Altera FPGA though, to be able to manage the ROM chips and I'm guessing doing some sort of bank switching and all that fun stuff. So there's that one. And then finally, we will take a look at an official cart. Not quite as large as the Final Fantasy V Repro, but then again, this is all you needed. And here you've got various components and everything. I did replace the battery on this one since it needed it replaced. And I mean, here's this build versus this. A lot more logic on here than here. But then again, some of these chips aren't available anymore, so they probably used these to recreate some of the functionality. This here would be the anti-piracy chip. Here they've got a logic chip, uh, the ROM, and then I believe this is the SRAM here. So yeah, there we go. Yeah, we labeled it right there. So Build quality, obviously it's made by Nintendo, so it's going to be as top-notch as it can be. All right, enough uh, babbling about the quality. You guys can make your own determination as to what which one you prefer and all of that. All I'll do is get this back together and we will test it to see if it works. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to test it on the Super Retro NHD, as I usually do with these types of repro cards, because I don't want to damage an actual Super Nintendo or my Super NT. So we're going to get that going now. Seems to work. Oh, well, looks like they uh, already have a save on here probably to test its functionality, so... How do I erase... I don't think... I, don't know. I would have to start a new game and... Uh... No, it's fine. Let's go with this here. Alright, let me see. So we've got eight minutes on here. Can I get into a battle of any kind, or I guess not. There we go. And now I'll restart and we'll see if it shows nine seconds. So I don't see any additional information about who might uh, have done the ROM translation for this because there's various different patches out there and a lot of them will usually put it at the 
title screen, credit screen, what have you. There it is, nine seconds though, which means this should work just fine. Well, game works, so let's go ahead and wrap up this uh, whole video and I'll discuss my final thoughts on the Final Fantasy V card itself. So, overall, I'm impressed with the quality of it. The game does seem to work, although I'll have to play through further just in case. But, you know, the build quality is good. I'm going to assume the rest of the data is good. It did not fry the the Super Retro in HD, so I can probably play this on an original Super Nintendo or the Super NT without any worries, which is good. Now, the price of this was a little higher than I expected. It was $40 versus a lot of these uh, repros that I find on eBay and Ali and Etsy that go for $20 to $30, but uh, I can't compare the build quality with this with those, so I'm just going to assume that this is $40 because of the higher build quality. Now, based on some researching I've done. A lot of people like the repros from this specific company, so that's uh, you know that's one of the reasons why I went with them. It's not that I wouldn't necessarily trust someone on Etsy with their repro, but you know, if uh, a lot of people recommended these guys, that's who I went with. Now, the controversy behind uh, Final Fantasy V in general is that there is various different uh, groups that have translated over the years and I don't see them being credited anywhere in this cart on their site or anything like that. And there was no option to specify which translation you wanted to use. So it's tough to say if they have permission or not to use the uh, translation and to be able to sell it and stuff. Now, you can make the argument that they're not selling the translation or, in fact, the original game itself, which they definitely don't have a license for. I can guarantee you that, that they're selling you the plastic, the PCB, the labeling, the engineering, the design, and the overall work. So maybe that's how they uh, can get away with uh, not getting into trouble. Personally, you know, I would prefer them giving credit. I've said it before with the Super Mario Land 1 and 2 DX color hacks that I've got there. Again, there was no mention of the original developer of that patch, which is unfortunate. But yeah, so that's my gripe is that there's no credit given to the original translator or translators, depending on, you know, how many people might have worked on it and which particular one they went with. So I'm not going to leave any links below or anything like that, because like I said, it's not a sponsored video. They're just the particular vendor I went with. You can Google them on your own if you want to take a chance and buy something with them. I haven't had any issue. Came pretty quickly. There you go. What are your thoughts? Leave them below. Otherwise, thanks all. I'll catch you later.